a very good evening friends i welcome you all to the hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by the shankar ais academy today's date is 28th october 2023 before getting into discussion i have an important announcement to make we know that current affairs are playing a key role in our upsc preparation it will be a constant companion in all the three stages of examination so to cover them holistically shankar ais academy has started chakra initiative this initiative features 50 plus current affairs session 9 total tests and 5 rapid revision sessions this will cover the current affairs holistically for both preliminary and mains perspective the first session starts from 1st november 2023 to get various other details about the program i am attaching a link below can we go through the program and enrich your preparation displayed here are the news articles which we are going to discuss today so let us get into discussion look at this news article recently there is an important issue going on between india and qatar which you would have seen in the newspapers see day before yesterday a qatari court awarded a death penalty to eight former indian naval personnels know that these personnels were arrested by the qatari intelligence agency in august 2022 but the charges against these eight individuals have not been disclosed by the qatari government but some sources are saying that they were arrested for espionage charges that is spying charges let us see brief about this burning issue see all the eight sentenced indians had previously worked for a private firm in qatar know that this firm earlier provided logistics training and maintenance services to the qatari naval forces in this juncture in 2021 qatar made a secretive deal with italy to procure high tech submarines these italian submarines are said to be coated with meta materials actually the speciality of this materials is that it makes the detection of these submarines very difficult so the news report says that these eight indians were spying on the qatar secretive program while working in a private firm so they were arrested last year and recently they were awarded death penalty in response to this sentence many experts in india have said that india must pursue all efforts including political appeals at the highest levels to ensure that these naval veterans are brought back to india this is all about this important issue see i have discussed this issue just for an understanding of a current geopolitical event now let us have a discussion about some of the important points on india qatar relationship from our exam perspective first of all the formal diplomatic relations between india and qatar were established in 1973 currently both the countries are celebrating 50th year of diplomatic relationship this relationship which was started in 1973 grew well and now both the countries are having a strong and substantive relationship moreover understand that over 8 lakh indian citizens are currently residing in qatar and this makes the indian community a large non native community of qatar these indians are doing various professions like medicine engineering education finance banking and sending an invaluable remittance back to our country know that in the financial year 2021 the inward remittances from qatar were approximately 1200 million us dollars with this basics about this relationship let us see the various facets of india qatar relationship first of all take economic relationship between india and qatar guys know that india's bilateral trade with qatar stood at 18.77 billion dollars in 2022-23 in 2022 india was the second largest export destination of qatar see know about the import basket of india see india is importing several crucial items from qatar like liquefied natural gas liquefied petroleum gas lpg petrochemicals plastics and aluminium articles note that qatar is the largest supplier of lng to india it accounts for more than 48% of global lng imports of india thus qatar playing a significant role in energy security of india now coming to india's export of qatar see qatar was the second largest export destination of india in 
द वेरियस की ईटम्स आफ एक्सपोर्ट्स फ्रम इंडिया टू कतार इनूड्स सीरियल कापर अयन अंड स्टील वजिटबल फ्रूट्स अंड स्पैस टेक्सटल गार्मेंट्स प्रिशिय स्टोन अंड रर् दीस आर आल अबउट द एकनमिक रिलेशनशिप बिटवी इंडिया अंड कटार लट अस्े द सेकंड डेमेंशन दट इस डिफेंस रिलेशनशिप गैस नो दैट डिफेंस कोआपरेशन इज एंड इंपार्ट पिलर आफ इंडिया कटार रिलेशनशिप सी इंडिया यूशली आफर्स ट्रेनिंग टू द डिफेंस पर्सनल आफ सेवरल पार्टनर कंट्री कटार इज वन अमांग दम कंट्री वेर इट्स डिफेंस पर्सनल विल रिशीव ट्रेनिंग फ्रम इंडियन डिफेंस इंस्टिट्यूशन अपार्ट फ्रम दिस इंडिया आलसो रेगुलरली पार्टिसपेट इन द बैनियल दोहा इंटरनेशनल मेरी टाइम डिफेंस एक्सीबिशन अंड कॉन्फ्रेंस दट यूस टू बी हेल्ड इन कटार इन दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस बोथ इंडिया अंड कटार डिस्क इंपार्ट डिफेंस कोआपरेशन बिटवी दम इन अडीशन टू दिस इंडियन नेवल फोर्स अंड कोस्ट गार्ड्स रेगुलरली कंडक्ट्स बैलेट्रल कोआपरेशन अंड इंटरक्शन अग्रिमेंट वित् कटार फार अंड एनहड सर्वेल This is all about the defence relationship between India and Qatar. Now, finally, let's see about the cultural cooperation between the countries. As I already told you, Indians are the largest non-native community in Qatar. So, naturally, cultural ties between India and Qatar will be deep rooted. In 2012, India and Qatar signed an agreement on cultural cooperation. Under the provisions of this agreement. both the countries are involved in regular cultural exchanges note that the year 2019 was celebrated as the indian qatar year of culture during this year various celebrations like over 45 cultural events including exhibitions fashion shows art display dance performance musical concerts were organized in qatar by the indian embassy this is all about the various facets of relationship between india and qatar in this analysis we saw about the burning current affairs issue going on between india and qatar then we saw the various facets of cooperation between india and qatar now having completed this discussion that's all about this discussion now having completed this discussion let us take up the next news article for discussion look at this article recently you would have heard that Union government has proposed three new bills. These bills will replace the age-old Indian Penal Code, Criminal Procedure Code, and Indian Evidence Act. The new bills are called Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita or BNS, Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita or BNSS, and Bharatiya Shakshya or BS, respectively. Know that these three new bills are now currently under the review of Parliamentary Standing Committee. Recently. There was a contention among opposition parties. They accused that sufficient time was not given to review the provisions of the bill. So, the panel's chairman has extended the time limit to review the provisions of the bill. This is all about the news article. In our discussion, we will look at the changes which are brought about by the new bills. First, let us see the changes brought about by Bharatiya Nyaya Samhita or BNS. Know that this is going to replace the indian penal code or ipc now we are going to see the changes under various subheadings so that you can use them effectively in your answer the first important issue is sedition as you all know that sedition was brought under the british period in 1870 even though it was brought under the british period it got continued even after independence let us see the definition of sedition as per the section 124a of the indian penal code it defines sedition as an act that brings or attempt to bring hatred or contempt or disaffection towards the government according to ipc sedition is punishable with imprisonment up to 3 years or life imprisonment see the sedition was often criticized by the civil society due to many unnecessary cases which were filed by various governments so to overcome this lacune bns bill removes this provision altogether instead of sedition the bill introduces new offenses such as attempting to excite secession armed rebellion or subversive activities the second offense is encouraging feelings of separatist activities thirdly endangering the sovereignty or unity and integrity of india see these three new offenses will be replacing sedition these offenses will be punishable with imprisonment up to 7 years or life imprisonment 
Let us see the second subheading. The second issue is regarding terrorism. Know that for the first time, BNS bill introduces a comprehensive definition of terrorism. It defines a terrorist as an individual who commits acts within India or abroad that are threatening the national unity, integrity, security of India. Terrorism is also an act which intimidates the public or disturb public order. The third change is regarding the defamation. The BNS bill redefines the offences of defamation and it also alters the penalties for it. Under the BNS bill, defamation will be punished by an imprisonment up to two years or community services. The next change is about organized crime. The BNS bill tries to give a proper definition of organized crime. Moreover, attempting or committing organized crime will be punishable with death sentence or life imprisonment if the offenses result in the death of a person and it will lead to imprisonment of five years in any other cases. The fifth change is about an important issue of mob lynching. For the first time, capital punishment has been introduced for an offense of mob lynching. In addition to this, the mob lynching is also made punishable with seven years of imprisonment or life imprisonment. The next change is regarding the punishment for rape. IPC allows death penalty for gang rape of a woman below 12 years. This bill allows a death penalty for a gang rape of a woman below 18 years of age. Thus, it increases the age by 6 years. Finally, the BNS has also incorporated Supreme Court's ruling in Joseph Shine vs. Union of India and Navdej Singh's Johar vs. Union of India. Thus, it excludes any punishment for unnatural sexual offences against men, that is Section 377, and it altogether omitted the provisions of adultery, that is Section 497. Now, we saw about some important changes which will be brought about by the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanhita or BNS Bill. Now, let us take the second bill, that is Bharatiya Nagrik Suraksha Sanhita, BNSS. Know that this bill will replace the Criminal Procedure Code or CRPC. Let us see the provisions of the bill. The first change is about the mandatory registration of cognizable offences. That is, this bill has an explicit provision stating that the cognizable offences must be registered in any police station, regardless of the place where the crime has been committed. That is, this bill aims to reduce the plight of the people in filing the FIR. The next important change is regarding handcuffing. The BNSS allows for handcuffing of a person who are accused of serious offences like terrorist attack, murder, rape or acid attack. It also has a provision stating that the arrested individual should not be subjected to greater restraint than what is necessary to prevent their escape. That is, the police official must only handcuff the accused person only if there is a chance of escape. The third important point is regarding the forensics. The new code mandates the presence of a forensic expert at the crime scene and the collection of evidence. See, this has got mandatory for offences which can attract sentences exceeding 7 years. So, this will ensure the timely collection of evidence. The fourth one is regarding the use of audiovisual media to record the investigation. See, the BNSS promotes the utilization of audiovisual modes to record different stages of investigations including search procedures. This is getting aligned with the Supreme Court Directive in the case of Safi Mohammed vs. State of Himachal Pradesh. See, the last one is regarding the police custody. The CRPC places a limit of 15 days on police custody. The BNSS removes this limitation. According to BNSS, if the police discover additional evidence during the investigation, then the 15-day limit can be extended. This decision regarding the extension must be taken by the judiciary. See, these are all the, some of the major changes brought about by the BNSS bill. Finally, let us see the changes brought about by Bharatiya Shaksha or BS bill. Know that this bill aims to replace the Indian Evidence Act. Let us see the changes. The first change is regarding the admissibility of electronic or digital records as an evidence. The BS bill provides that electronic or digital records will have the same legal effect as the paper records. This bill also adds that any information given electronically can also be considered as an oral evidence. Then the BS bill also made changes regarding the secondary evidence. Here what do you mean by secondary evidence? Here secondary evidence can include copies 
duplicates or any other form of evidence that is not the original document or object know that according to the bill secondary evidence may be required if the genuineness of the original document itself in question see these are some of the major changes brought about by the bs bill in this discussion we saw about the comprehensive changes brought about in the criminal justice system of india these will be very important from our exam perspective once they have made us a law so keep revising this notes for better conceptual clarity with this we can finish this topic and takes the next one for discussion look at this news article yesterday the enforcement directorate ed has arrested west bengal minister related to a case this case is related to the irregularities in the public distribution system or pds of a state this is the crux of the article so in this news article discussion let us quickly go through the enforcement directorate the basics and some of the functions of the ed first of all enforcement directorate or directorate of enforcement is a specialized financial investigation agency under the department of revenue ministry of finance know that the ed enforces two important acts they are foreign exchange management act or fema act of 1999 and prevention of money laundering act or pmla of 2002 let us see the nuances of the act to understand the concept better firstly foreign exchange management act or fema is a civil law it provides quasi judicial powers to the enforcement directorate this act empowers the officers to conduct investigation into the suspected violations of foreign exchange laws and regulations know that ed also gives power to adjudicate them and imposes penalties let us see the second one the second act is prevention of money laundering act know that this act is a criminal act it empowers the officers to conduct investigation and trace the assets know that these assets were derived out of the proceeds of the crime moreover it empowers the ed to provisionally attach or confiscate that assets know that this act authorizes the ed to arrest and prosecute the offenders who are found to be involved in money laundering see these are all the basics of ed now let us see the main functions of ed the first function as we saw already their function is to investigate the various contraventions of the fema act know that these contraventions will be dealt by a designated officer or authority of the enforcement directorate moreover the penalties up to 3 times the sum which was yet involved in that case will be imposed on such contraventions second function is to investigate the offenses of money laundering under pmla in such cases ed will take actions like attachment and confiscation of the properties this usually not happens in every cases this will happen in some cases know that this will happen only when the said property is obtained by the proceeds of the crime which is directly derived from the scheduled offenses of the pmla act for your understanding know that there are 156 offenses under 28 statutes which are scheduled offenses under this act moreover it will prosecute the persons involved in the offenses of money laundering the next function is processing the cases of fugitives from india under fugitive economic offenders act 2018 know that the objective of the act is to provide deterrence to fugitive economic offenders from evading the process of law from india see fugitives usually evade the indian jurisdiction by staying outside the jurisdiction of indian courts overall this helps to preserve the sanctity of rule of law of india fourth function it gives cooperation to the agencies of the foreign countries in matters related to money laundering or fugitive offenders it also seeks cooperation from other agency in such matters these are all the various functions of enforcement directorate in our analysis we saw about the structure of enforcement directorate the various acts enforced by it and we also saw about the functions of enforcement directorates so with these learned points let us quickly take up the next article for discussion take a look at this editorial article this editorial article talks about two important phenomenons which are the order of today's world firstly it talks about the ongoing crisis in the world secondly it highlights the need for a formation of global community of shared future further the author points out that the primary factors that are required to achieve the formation of a global community vision are open economic globalization 
peaceful development, fostering new international relations, practicing true multilateralism, and promoting the common values of peace and security. According to this article, China and India are ideal counterparts in achieving this vision. With their significant population, both China and India can work together to show the global South's commitment in creating a prosperous and peaceful world. This is the summary of the news article. Now, as usual, let us try to understand this topic using a mains question. Let us see the question. The question is, despite differences at various level, India and China relations are critical to realize a Asian century. In the light of this statement, analyze the various issues in the India-China relations and the benefits of working together. This, see, this question was asked for 15 marks and the word limit given is 250. Now, this question can ask it in a GS paper 2 under the syllabus of India and its neighborhood relations. Let us answer this question. This question is a very straightforward question. The question starts by quoting a statement. Despite differences at various level, India-China relations are critical to realize the Asian century. So, in the introduction, we have to substantiate the statement by giving some facts. For example, you can start by explaining what is Asian century. See, the Asian century is the projected dominance of Asian politics, its culture, its economics in the whole of 21st century. The idea is Asia will define the or redefine the 21st century international order similar to how US defined in 20th century and Europe did in 19th century. The only way to attain the Asian century is to emphasize on unity and developing a progressive relationship between India and China. Know that China and India represent 40% of the world population and they are at the center of growth of Asia. Thus, the relationship between them is paramount to re realize the vision of Asian century. In this way, you can write the introduction. Moving on, to write the main body of the answer, you can split the question into two parts. In the first part, you can write some important issues and challenges in the Indo-China relations. And in the second part, you can list some of the advantages of them working together. Now let us see the issues. The first issue is with territorial disputes. See, both the countries share a 3500 km international border. So naturally, they would have shared the common cultural and religious heritage. However, there are various border disputes, particularly in the regions of Akshay Chin and Arunachal Pradesh have been prevailing between them. These issues have led to the periodical military standoffs and tensions which are revolving around them. So resolving these disputes remains a significant challenge in the Indochina relationship. Second issue is with economic competition. See, both the countries are major players in global economy and their economic interests often compete with each other, especially in the sectors like technology, trade and investment. Know that there is also a growing power gap between China and India. In 2022, China's GDP was $18 trillion, while India was nearly $4 trillion. So, China's economy is five times larger than India. The third issue is security concerns. Know that India and China have different security priorities and alliances, which led to a strategic competition and mistrust among them. Chinese policies like String of Pearls, CPEC Corridor, and other parts of China and Belt and Road Initiatives is seen as a threat to India's national security. India has also raised a voice for the illegal encroachment of China in the South China Sea. Fourthly, there are political differences between India and China. Both of the countries are different in their political systems, values, ideologies. This can also hinder the cooperation between them on various issues. Particularly, India is against the debt-trapped diplomacy of China. Finally, there are various partnerships with each other's enemy nations. For example, India's active participation in the Quad is seen as a direct threat by Chinese authorities. Finally, there exists a water dispute between the two countries. Currently, both of them do not have a water sharing agreement. So, the construction of various dams along the Brahmaputra on the Chinese side has become a repeated cause of concern for India. Guys, you can write this point in issues or challenges in India-China relationship. With this, we have completed the first part of our body. Now let us move on to the second part of body. Here, you have to write about the benefits of both the countries working together. Firstly, you can write about the economic opportunities. See, both India and China are fast-going economies. 
while china is the largest economy in asia with a nominal gdp of 20000 billion dollars in 2023 india is the second largest in asia with a gdp of 272 lakh crores so if they unite together there will be a synergy with huge economic opportunities and it will ultimately millions of people out of poverty the second benefit is reaping the demographic dividend see recently a pew survey estimates that current median indian age is 28 as compared to china's 39 it's suggesting that india will continue to enjoy the demographic advantage up to the end of this century so if the technology from china and human resource from india if they got united together they will definitely reap the combined demographic dividend and the pave the way for asian century thirdly engagement in investments see india and china relations has not reached full potential due to the lack of bilateral investments but china can provide market for india to invest in its pharmaceutical industries agricultural industries software industries india is a market for china for its technological industries apart from this the credit giving institutions like ndb or new development bank asian infrastructure investment bank and adb would fail without the active cooperation between new delhi and beijing fourthly success of new organizations like shanghai cooperation organization and economic deals like trans pacific partnership and rcep are indicator of asia emerging as a center of geopolitics and geoeconomics these platforms as a center of asian century would be successful only when the two great engines of asia that is india and china work together fifthly asian century cannot be realized under the threat of terrorism see the terrorism has impacted regional structures in south asia in a negative way so it is very important for this countries to stand together against the terrorism to promote stability in the region regional stability would ensure mutual growth you can write these points in the second part of your answer moving on to the conclusion part in conclusion you can write like this india and china share a complex relationship with numerous challenges between them but they also have a lot to gain from working together their cooperation is critical not only for the regional stability but also for shaping and reshaping the future of asia and addressing the pressing challenges of global order so finding common ground and mutually beneficial solutions to the differences is very essential for realizing the potential of the asian century this is how you can finish your answer that's all about this discussion in this discussion we saw about what is asian century and the benefits of india and china working together that's all about this discussion now let us take the next news article for discussion look at this news article yesterday our president draupadi murmu presided over the 8th convocation of indian maritime university imu chennai in her address the president called for operational efficiency of indian ports she said that indian maritime sector particularly the ports are facing infrastructural and operational challenges the president called for addressing this issues in a time bound manner see this is the crux of the article so in our discussion let us understand some points about the indian ports know that india has nine coastal states they are gujarat maharashtra goa karnataka kerala tamil nadu andhra pradesh odisha and west bengal each of these states have numerous sea ports in india the sea ports are classified into three types namely major ports intermediate ports and minor ports see if we take major ports there are 12 major ports in this country now look at the map here the 12 major ports and their respective locations are displayed in this map if you look carefully tamil nadu has three major ports namely chennai port ennur port and thootukurin port so tamil nadu has the largest number of major ports in india then maharashtra has two major ports namely mumbai port and jnpt now let us see the other major ports according to their geographic location let us see the ports in the arabian sea they are kandla port of gujarat marmagowa port of goa new mangalore port of karnataka cochin port of kerala let us see the ports in the bay of bengal section they are visakhapatnam port of andhra pradesh paradip port of odisha and finally kolkata port of west bengal now having seen all the major ports of india let us see some important facts about the major ports 
See, in West Bengal, there is also another major port named Haldia Port. But Kolkata Port and Haldia Port together referred as the single major port and called by single name Kolkata Port. Note that in earlier in 2010, Port Blair located in Andaman and Nicobar were also notified as a major port. But later it got removed from the list due to less container traffic. So, 13 minus 1. As of now, there are 12 major ports in this country. Note that the major ports of India are administered by Union Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways. Moreover, India has also constituted Indian Ports Association IPA in 1966 under the Societies Registration Act. This association is responsible for fostering growth and development of all major ports across the country. Guys, this is all about the major ports of India. Now let us come to intermediate and minor ports. There are more than 200 intermediate ports and minor ports operating in nine coastal states of India. See these ports are administered by the respective ministries of the state government. See that's all about this news discussion. In this discussion we saw about the 12 major ports of India, their distribution and the various facts of major ports which are very related to our examination. With this learned points let us move to the next article for discussion. Look at this news article. Yesterday, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the 7th India Mobile Congress at Delhi. In his address, he hailed the telecom operators of India for spreading 5G revolution in the Indian cities. The PM noted that over 80% of India's urban population now having access to high-speed 5G technology. He also said that India is moving towards becoming a leader in the field of 6G technology. This is the crux of the article. In this discussion, let us understand some points about 5G technology. First of all, let us see about 5G. 5G stands for 5th generational mobile network. 5G is the next generation cellular technology that provides faster and more reliable communication with ultra low latency. In this juncture, let us see what is latency. See, latency is the time delay between a user's action and a web application responds to that particular action. Let us simplify this with an example. Let us say you are searching for UPSC notification in the Chrome browser from your phone. And let us assume that it is taking around 10 seconds to display the relevant web page. This 10 second is what is termed as latency. So to put it simply, latency is the total time period that system takes to give your record output. Generally, low latency is preferred because it will give you the output very faster. Ok, now coming back to our discussion. 5G offers ultra low latency network. It provides faster communication. Sources are saying that 5G network is able to provide a peak data speed in the range of 2 to 20 GB per second. Note that the peak network data speed of 4G is in the range of 6 to 7 Mbps. So, the speed of 5G will be at least 900% faster than the maximum 4G speed. Now, let us come into the benefits of 5G technology. Firstly, 5G technology will help the mobile user to download the very heavy data content such as HD videos, movies, games in a few seconds. Secondly, 5G technology will also reduce the power consumption of mobile phones by about 90%. Know that Mostly our phone consumes huge power due to fluctuations and low speed in the networks. As 5G is providing a network with ultra low latency, it will help us to save power consumption in phones. Thirdly, with high speed communication, 5G will revolutionize the emerging technologies such as Internet of Things, Machine Learning, Machine to Machine Communication, etc. This in turn will support a wide variety of applications and services such as tele-surgery, driverless vehicles and real-time data analytics. Fourthly, 5G technology will boost the use of sensor technology on farming. With the help of 5G technology, we will be able to connect and monitor a large number of sensors in farming lands. It will in turn speed up the monitoring of soil moisture. Thus, it will lead to the improvement of crop yields while using less water. These are all some of the benefits of 5G technology. So, in our discussion, we saw about the basic futures of 5G technology like latencies etc. On continuing our discussion, we saw about the various benefits of 5G technology. That's all about the news discussion. 
with this let us move on to the next part of our video that is preliminary practice questions today we are having four preliminary questions let us solve it one by one see the first question the question is consider the following countries iraq kuwait yemen qatar iran how many of the above mentioned countries share border with the persian gulf see eight countries share border with the persian gulf they include iraq kuwait saudi arabia bahrain qatar uae oman and iran so of the five countries which are given only yemen does not share border with the persian gulf so the correct option is option c see the second question consider the following statements with reference to the enforcement directorate the first statement it is mandated with the task of enforcing the provisions of fema and pmla act see from our discussion we can easily say that the statement one is correct see the second statement it is a statutory body see the statement second is incorrect because ed is not a statutory body it is an agency under ministry of finance see the third statement like cbi ed can also register a case on its own statement 3 is incorrect ed cannot register a case on its own it's required by the agency such as cbi or state police to register a case based on that only ed will come into picture so the first statement alone is correct second and third statements are incorrect so the correct option is option a let us see the third question which of the following options best describe the main objective of sagarmala program see out of the four options given let us see the third option the third option is it is a flagship scheme that aims to promote a port led development in india and thereby reducing the logistical cost see this statement is correct because sagarmala is a flagship program of the ministry of shipping with the objective which is given in this question so the correct statement is option c let us see the final question of the day the question is how many of the following are the benefits of using 5g technology the first benefit is ultra low latency second is real time data analytics third is power efficiency in smart devices see all are the given options are the benefits of 5g technology so the correct option is option c see the main question based on the today's discussion is listed here interested aspirants can write the answer and post it in the comment section if you like today's video like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding the upsc preparation subscribe to shankar ias academy thank you for listening thank you